There's a right way to do things and a wrong way if you're going to run a hotel in a smuggler's town. You shouldn't make it a habit to ask too many questions, for one thing. And you probably shouldn't be in it for the money. Smugglers are always going to be flush with cash as soon as they find a buyer for the eight cartons of fountain pen cartridges that write in illegal shades of green. But they never have money today. You should, if you're going to run a smuggler's hotel, get a big account book and assume that whatever you write in it, the reality is you're going to get paid in fountain pen cartridges, if you're lucky. You could just as easily get paid with something even more useless. Milo Pine did not run a smuggler's hotel, but his parents did. It was an inn, actually, a huge ramshackle manor house that looked as if it had been cobbled together from discarded pieces of a dozen mismatched mansions collected from a dozen different cities. It was called Greenglass House, and it sat on the side of a hill overlooking an inlet of harbors, a little district built half on the shore and half on the piers that jutted out into the river skid rack like the teeth of a comb. It was a long climb up to the inn from the waterfront by foot, or an only slightly shorter trip by the cable railway that led from the inn's private dock up the steep slope of Wilforber Hill. And of course the inn wasn't only for smugglers, but that was who turned up most often, so that was how Milo thought of it. Milo had lived at Greenglass House ever since he had been adopted by Nora and Ben Pine when he was a baby. It had always been home. And he was used to the bizarre folks who passed through the inn, some of them coming back every season like extended family who showed up to pinch your cheeks at holidays and then disappeared again. After twelve years, he was even getting pretty good at predicting who was going to show up when. Smugglers were like bugs or vegetables. They had their seasons, which was why it was so weird when the huge old bell on the porch, the one that was connected to the winch that drove the cable that in turn hauled the car up its tracks, started ringing. The old iron bell's tone changed with the seasons too, and with the time of day. This evening, the first of winter vacation, was cold and brittle, and the snow had just begun to fall. Today, therefore, the bell itself had a brittle tone. It had a sound like a gulp of frigid air. Milo looked up from the coffee table, where he was working on a math problem. He liked to get his homework out of the way right off the bat so he could enjoy the holidays without thinking about school. He glanced at his mother who was sprawled across the rag rug in front of the big stone fireplace, reading. Someone's coming up? he asked incredulously. Mrs. Pine got to her feet, tucked her book under her arm, padded across to the foyer, and peered out the window by the door. Someone wants to. We'd better go start the winch. But we never have guests the first week of vacation, Milo protested. He felt a vague unease start to rise in his stomach and tried to swallow it down. Vacation couldn't possibly get spoiled so quickly, could it? He'd only stepped off the launch that ferried the Quayside kids to and from school a few hours ago. Well, not often we don't, Mrs. Pine said as she laced up her boots. But that's not because we have a rule about it. It's just because that's the way it usually turns out. But it's vacation. His mother shrugged and held out his coat. Come on, kiddo, be a gentleman. Don't send your mom out into the cold alone. Ah, the all-powerful gentleman card. Still grumbling, Milo got to his feet, quietly whispering, Vacation, 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 as he slouched across to join her. He had just about finished his homework, that was supposed to be the end of responsibility for a while. The bell rang again. Milo gave in to his frustration, stopped in the middle of the foyer with one boot on, and gave a single furious yell with his hands clenched at his sides. Mrs. Pine waited with folded arms until he was finished. Got that out of your system? 
she asked gently. Milo scowled. I know this isn't the usual routine, his mother added, and I know you don't like it when things don't happen the way you expect. She bent to hunt in the catch-all basket beside the door for a flashlight. But look, being surprised isn't always a bad thing. <laughs>